Okay, this is take five million. Hello there, this is Cool Dude Clem, and in this video, I'm going to build a reactor. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Now I've got your attention, I'm going to build a reactor. Or to be more precise, a saturatable reactor or magnetic amplifier as it's also known. Now, while I would like to achieve cold fusion and solve the world's energy crisis and things like that, I think a boring video on electronics will have to do for now. So, what is it? Well, this is a device that dates back to the 1890s and it can control a large AC current with a small DC current. And here's the thing, it uses no transistors, no integrated circuits, or anything like that. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a brief description of what this actually is. So, basically what you've got here is a transformer that's acting like a valve. So, you know, you put your load in series with the winding that's got a few turns, and then you put a small DC current on the winding that has many turns, and that will saturate the transformer. So it will lower its inductance and it will conduct more. So if we vary that voltage, we can vary basically the AC resistance of the transformer. And you can control things like motors and lights and, you know, all kinds of things. So, um, yeah, let's build one of these. So here I have a transformer. It's nothing special, it's just an ordinary mains step-down transformer, so we've got your low voltage winding here, which is maybe 20 turns or so, and then the high voltage winding, which is probably like 200 or something like that. Got a 9 volt AC supply coming along these wires here, a light bulb, a 9 volt battery, and a 5 kilo ohm variable resistor. Right, so... If we take our transformer here, and we connect our AC supply, the load, and the low voltage side of the transformer, all in series, that wire would stop getting that um, rather reluctant to connect there. So, we have the low voltage side of the transformer, the AC supply and the load, all in series. So now what we need to do to turn on this bulb and control its brightness is apply a small DC current to the other side of the transformer. There is just one small little problem. Yes, you've got to remember that this is a transformer, so now we've got AC going into the low voltage side. It's going to step that voltage up and we'll get a much higher voltage on the high voltage side and in fact, you can see right here on the meter, we have almost 140 volts and we do not want that getting into our battery or our variable resistor because that will not end well. So how can we fix this little problem? Well, how about instead of one transformer we use two transformers and connect one of them out of phase. Yes, with our two transformers the high voltage windings are connected in series but the low voltage windings are connected in parallel and one of them is connected in the opposite polarity. So, although both of these transformers are still stepping up that voltage, this one is doing the exact opposite of this one and this one is doing the exact opposite of this one. So, let's just measure the voltage coming out of these transformers. We'll do the bottom one first. As you might or may not be able to see, we're getting about 124 volts out of that one. This one should be giving us round about the same voltage. There we are. If I can just stop that coming off. Yeah, it's a little bit off, but it's about the same. So, if we measure from N to N, which is where we're going to connect our control current, we'll see that there'll be nothing, or very close to nothing. 
as you can see, we have about 150 millivolts. Ideally, that voltage should be nothing, but for this experiment, that's good enough. So let's just do that right now. Yeah, just before I do that, though, just so you know I'm not bluffing, let's short out the high voltage of the lower transformer. You can see the light comes on. And let's do the same with the upper transformer. You can see the light comes on again. But if I short out across both of the transformers from end to end, you can see nothing happens. Okay, so I'm just using a little light here so we can see the bulb more easier. So, I'm going to connect up my battery and the variable resistor. If I could just get that to stay on the battery's terminal, there we go. It's not really necessary to coil up these wires, but I'm just doing that so I can get it all in the shot. And you can see right away that the bulb has actually come on a little bit. So let's turn up the variable resistor. And as you can see, it's getting brighter. And there we are on at full brightness. And now let's turn that back down. And you can see it's getting dimmer. And of course, there is no way a 5 kilo ohm variable resistor on its own would be able to regulate the current through a bulb. So, this circuit is, as you can see, it works. So, I know you're saying. This is an awful lot of trouble to go through just to control the brightness of a bulb. And, well, yes it is. But the thing is, I want to use this circuit, I want to use this device for something a little more interesting. Yes, this little controller box I got here for my fan, although it did its job and it worked quite well, because it's triac based, it made the fan motor rather noisy. Noisy to the point where I just couldn't sleep through the humming. So I've disconnected that and at the moment have the fan running off this transformer here on this rather messy bench. It's just stepping the voltage down to about 180 volts and I have to have the fan on at night because not to keep me cool but just to provide a little bit of white noise that I can sleep to. Alright so this is my idea for adding variable speed to the fan. So, this badly drawn apple here is actually the fan, and I'm going to have to break a few rules here, because the only two identical transformers I have that will be able to handle the current that the fan takes are a couple of circular transformers, and the trouble is there's not enough inductance in the low voltage side to lower the voltage to the fan, so the fan is going to have to be connected up to the high voltage side and we'll put our control voltage into the low voltage side which is completely the opposite way around to how you would normally do this kind of thing but I think if we get enough current into those windings it'll still work. Right, so let's do this thing. Now, in the picture in picture you can see an extreme close up of the fan that's about the only place I can put the webcam where I can see it, so that's just going to have to do. So, first of all, let's just short the two transformers out end to end, and it shouldn't do anything. And indeed it doesn't, so that is good. But let's connect our battery and bulb up to it and see what happens. Aha! Uh -huh. There you go. The fan is spinning. Not very fast, but it is spinning. Let's see how much current that's taking. It's probably about 200 milliamps or something like that. Um, let's just put my meter on there and find out. Of course, we want to be on the amps jack. Make sure we're on DC amps. Obviously, I'm not going to do this for too long, and I've got my leads all mixed up, although that probably would have still worked. This just goes to show you, when you don't have any preparation, 
how many things can go wrong. Right, so let's connect up our battery. How many? Okay, that's about 270 milliamps. And 9 volts times 270 milliamps, that's... Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but that's like less than a watt, and we're putting about 5 watts into the fan, so we're still getting amplification here. Well, it wouldn't be a complete Cool Dude Clems electronic workshop without vacuum tubes in it. Although, all these are doing, um, I'm just using the filaments as some rather beefy resistors. And I've got these coils connected to my bench power supply, so when I turn it on, power's going to flow through these tubes and then into the two coils and then back to the power supply, so let's turn it on. I've also got my meter in line with the power supply, so we can check on the current. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, we've got about 270 milliamps. I'm going to start turning up the voltage, which should increase the current. Okay, we're about 500 milliamps. It's got to 700 milliamps. 750 milliamps, and now we're at full power. Back down to about 300 milliamps. And you can see that's working pretty good. Alright, just as a matter of interest, let's see what the DC voltage across the coils is when we're at about 750 milliamps. That's about 1.6 volts, so... So yeah, we're not going to need much voltage at all. And of course I don't want to do that for too long because I don't want to stress my power supply. So I think it's about time we made a power supply specifically for this task. Alright, so this is the schematic that I've come up with. It's got a little bit smudged here, but... I don't think that's really going to matter. So we've got a transformer here, putting out about 4 volts, going into a full bridge rectifier, a smoothing capacitor. Then we just got a couple of transistors here and a couple of resistors where I can adjust how much voltage comes out with this potentiometer here. And as you may or may not know, as voltage rises, current does as well. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to build this, put this on the breadboard, make do a few experiments on it, make sure it works, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see it, we'll do it for real. Alright, I've built up the circuit that's going to um, do the thing, so let's see if this works. As I turn this knob up and down, we should be able to adjust the voltage coming out. And yeah, I'm kind of breaking my own rules using transistors here, instead of only transformers and resistors and voltage sources, but... Hopefully this should work. So as I turn this knob up and down, the output voltage should increase and decrease. So I'm powering this off my for 12 volt supply. Okay, and we're getting about 6.4 volts across our load resistor. Let's just twiddle this knob here. Yep. Almost all the way up to the 12 volts. Got to remember that there's a little bit of drop across the transistors. And we can go down to nothing. So that's going to work really good. Now I'm not going to be powering that circuit on 12 volts because if I do that, those transistors are going to get pretty hot, even though I'm going to put them on a heatsink. So. I've wound an additional secondary onto this transformer that gives us about 3 volts. So there's not going to be so much voltage drop across the transistors. So as the voltage increases, the current is going to increase, and hopefully the transistors won't get too hot. Okay, so amidst this mess of wires is the actual circuit that I'm going to do. So. 
Over here we've got the transformer that's going to power the little um, regulator circuit and I've got a light bulb in series with that transformer's primary. Just to limit the current and should anything go wrong all the current's going to go through that light bulb and not burn out any transistors, hopefully. Then we've got the resistors and the two toroid, circular, whatever you want to call them, transformers and my multimeter to measure the current. Uh, let's see if this thing works. No idea what's going to happen. So I'm going to turn the power on and then I'm going to start turning up this little potentiometer here which is on this wire so I can use it sort of remotely. So let's see what happens. Okay, power is all on so I'm going to start turning this up. And the current should increase. Okay, we're at 100 milliamps. 200 milliamps, 300 milliamps. I'm going to test the temperatures, make sure nothing is getting hot. So far it's cold. See how far up we can go. Okay, that's on its fullest now. It's at 565 milliamps. Nothing is getting hot, that's good. Let's turn this down a little. So, yeah. Well, that's working really good. That's amazing, I've actually made something that works. Well, I'm just going to let this run for a few minutes and keep an eye on the temperature of things and I'll be back. Well I have to say this has been a very successful experiment. The fan is on full right now being, you know, controlled by this thing and the transistors are not even warm. Well they're a little bit warm but they're nowhere near, you know, hot. I mean I could even put a small heat sink on there and it wouldn't be a problem. The light bulb, but yeah, there's a little bit of heat coming off that, but it's you know not even glowing. And we're at about 574 milliamps going into the, you know, into the low voltage windings of these two transformers. Let's just turn the fan down a bit so you can see me. I mean, if you can, so you can hear me over it. There we go. That's better. So yeah, I've been testing this at various different power levels, you know, starting at almost nothing, trying that for 10 minutes, then turning it up a little, trying that for 10 minutes, and so on, and, you know. I only just got, you know, sort of like lukewarm, so I'm really surprised at how well that worked. Anyway, I've got to put this all together now and put it somewhere, so uh, yeah. I'll leave the video now, and until next time, goodbye. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider giving me a big thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment if you have one. And as always, until next time, goodbye.